While the Xbox had a little game called Halo, the PlayStation 2 was no slouch when it came to first-person shooters. All it needs is a spark. Here are the 10 best FPS games on the PlayStation 2 ranked. Number 10, Return to Castle Wolfenstein. Obviously, the latest series of Wolfenstein games is based on the classic first-person shooter game by id, and itself an homage to an older game. But smack dab in the middle is a great game that could use a lot more love. Return to Castle Wolfenstein was developed by Grey Matter Studios, a California-based company best known for the Redneck Rampage franchise. Yes, really. This game cuts out all the fluff, and you know, any details of World War II, and delivers an explosive of flame engulfed adventure involving the occult. It reads like a 14 year old wrote it. And you know what? We wouldn't have it any other way. <laughs> Number 9, Kill Zone. Kill Zone was a game with a lot of baggage. As the console wars shifted away from the platform mascots of the past and instead onto first person shooters, Sony was expected to respond to the breakaway success that was Xbox's Halo Combat Evolved, a game which had been in development well before the Xbox was even greenlit. Kill Zone, though, did an admirable job of creating a hard sci fi world, where Earth humans fight against their own totalitarian colonies, and its visuals were completely antithetical to Bungie's neon colors and toyetic needlers. Its performance wasn't always steady, but when seen without the aforementioned baggage, this is a quality FPS on the PlayStation 2, and an exclusive. Number 8, Cold Winter. Cold Winter came and went on the PlayStation 2 with little fanfare or attention, but as time went on, word of mouth spread on this cover-based first-person shooter. Yes, you heard that right, a cover-based first-person shooter on the PlayStation PlayStation 2. Sure, you were still mostly expected to ride headlong into a gunfight, but the added ability to flip tables, which were always conveniently nearby, and hide behind them, is a neat feature that we surprisingly haven't seen in other games since this game launched on the PlayStation 2. If you're a fan of comically gruff protagonists and clandestine spy nonsense, and you should be, this one's a winner. Number 7, Dark Watch, Curse of the West. High Moon Studios has gone on to be an accomplished support team on some of the world's biggest first-person shooters, including both Destiny 1 and and Destiny 2, as well as multiple Call of Duty games, so it's kind of funny that their first game, Dark Watch Curse of the West, seems to have little interest in precision and strategy, and instead, players take control of a vampire cowboy in the Wild West, shooting skeletons with a crossbow. The game is simple, sure, but exceptionally functional, allowing the audacious concept to take center stage, and letting the player simply overcome the odds in a gothic power fantasy. Hey, by the way, where's the HD port of this game already? Number 6, James Bond 007 Nightfire. Well, nowhere near as influential as Rare's 007 Goldeneye, James Bond 007 Nightfire was an excellent shooter in its own right, recreating the espionage adventures of Ian Fleming's character. But Nightfire, more so than any other game on this list, is best remembered for its multiplayer death matches, which many players enjoyed well into the wee hours of the morning. The PS2 had many classics, but few options for great FPS multiplayer. Thankfully, Nightfire's Desert Eagle battles helped fill the gap. Number 5, Brothers in Arms, Road to Hill 30. If you've been waiting for a hidden gem, here it is. Brother in Arms Road to Hill 30, while a mouthful, was essentially barring the gravitas of the HBO series Band of Brothers and applying it to the first-person shooter campaign. You'll certainly do some rather unbelievable things here, so it's far from a documentary. But the hyper-grounded gameplay required players to strategize, use cover, and flank. Anything less than this would usually result in an instant shot to the dome. Yeesh. And here's an odd fact. This was developed by Gearbox, who would go on to create the Borderlands franchise. Go figure. Number 4, Half-Life. Look, Half-Life is better on PC than console. Sure, that much is true, but the PS2 version of this classic was a pretty darn good port of this watershed moment in video games, and it had at least one very unique trick up its sleeve, Half-Life Decay, an expansion to the original game featuring a new story and co-op gameplay. And sadly for PC users, this has never been released to PC officially. So way to go, PS2! And the developer of that expansion and this port was Gearbox Games? These guys again? Man, they really got around on the PS2, huh? Number 3, Red Faction. Red Faction has been all sorts of things over the years, from a third-person open-world shooter to a made-for-television movie, which was awful. But most overlooked is where it started, a revolutionary first-person shooter on the PlayStation 2. Yes, really, this was revolutionary. This game introduced the Geomod technology, which allowed environments to react to in-game events. For instance, blowing up walls or mining through the ground, which considering you're on a mining colony, you'll be doing a lot, there's still no first-person shooter really trying what 
Volition did back in 2001, presumably because it must be really hard to do. Can anyone figure out Geomod for current gen? Number two, Medal of Honor Frontline. Now a relic of a bygone era, the Medal of Honor franchise was seen as prestigious thanks to its relation to its plot developer and writer, Steven Spielberg. Yes, that Steven Spielberg, not the other one. Frontline would be the first in the series developed without Spielberg's involvement, but you'd hardly know it as this game famously opens up with the recreation of the invasion of Normandy, itself being recreated by the Spielberg film Saving Private Ryan. Today the presentation isn't nearly as striking, but at the time most console first person shooters simply weren't scripting sequences to this scale. And after this, and Half-Life, that changed. Number one, Time Splitters 2. As you've no doubt noticed by this point, all of these games, while popular in their own respect, could not deliver what Halo had to the Xbox to the PlayStation 2. But man, Time Splitters 2 went above and beyond to compete with Halo's local multiplayer. Using the all too often ignored PS2 iLink, up to 16 players were able to enjoy this time travel shooter together. Yes, 16 players. Now make no mistake, Time Splitters smooth gameplay is the main draw here. Here, and the single player and co-op also deserve acclaim. But 16 players on the PS2, that really can't be beat. And there you have it, the 10 best FPS games on the PS2 ranked. Man, the PS2 had one heck of a library. Even the genres it isn't known for can still make a killer top 10, which is why you should keep clicking around here on Game Rant. We've got plenty more lists, which means we've also got plenty more surprises. So stick around and we'll see you soon.